It's really amazing what that is. If I was going to find a micrometeorite, where would I look? Because they hit the earth all the time. Well, welcome back to Faraday Studios, home of the wizards. What number of wizard am I? You're a wizard four. You're a wizard five. We're looking for wizard five, by the way. If you know any wizards that haven't got anything to do, send them our way. I want you to look at this thing. Never seen it before. What is that? One messed up chicken egg. One messed up from one messed up chicken or it's an egg that's been, yeah, I don't know. It looks egg shaped, right? It's really amazing what that is. Look at those lines. Look like little leaves or like a fern is it plant. Is a fossil? That's evidence that that thing was hot at one time. And then it was cold. Cold, probably cooled off pretty fast to freeze those lines in place, kind of like frost. Well, I want to tell you what, that shape right there is about half the thickness of a dime. That's a close up picture of it. Right, so, so it's like that big. Yeah, tiny little thing. Tiny little thing. Why is it significant if it's only that big? That big. Well, you're standing on it, the significance right now. We have a book, and I recommend it, by the way. This is written by John Larson. He suggested, and he, uh, this man, when he did this book, worked his tail off to collect micrometeorites. It turns out, and I'm gonna explain why here in a minute, most of the micrometeorites that make it are about the same size. How fast do you think a micrometeorite is traveling when it ran, runs into the earth? 100 miles an hour? 100 miles an hour. Listen to what it says here. The micrometeoroids right. enter the earth's atmosphere with up to 50 times that of a rifle bullet, depending on the entry angle. Now you can imagine how fast a bullet comes out of a rifle. Right? Now imagine 50 times faster than that. I don't, I don't think I can do the sound effects for that. No, no, that's fast. They come through the air. They come through so fast that they heat up when they hit the air yep. and they melt. Yep. And depending on how big they are and what they're made of and the direction at which they hit, you know, they can get anywhere from what, 1300 degrees or so up to 2000 degrees centigrade. It's real hot, and that's enough to melt some of them just into a gas, right? But some of them make it through. If I was gonna find a micrometeorite, where would I look? Because they hit the Earth all the time. The Earth is traveling around the sun 66,000 miles an hour. So that'd be 300 million miles in a year. That's 66,000 miles an hour. So we're traveling through space that fast, and if we get any bugs in our windshield, these little rocks out there. Some of them are big. They're gonna make big craters, and you'll see pictures of big craters in a rock, the rock the size of the house hit. But most of them that hit now are tiny little micrometeorites. But tons and tons of them hit every day. Well, there's a, there's a way you can actually find a micrometeorite. You have to be patient. They're not easy because they're spread out and they're small. Do you use a magnet? You could use a magnet. Or a metal detector. Me well, a metal detector too. But you're gonna try to find some micrometeorites and you can get them off the roof of your house. Of course, there's a lot of other stuff that lands on your roof. Birds. You know, birds, yeah. bird stuff, and things from factories and automobiles are throwing out little slivers of dirt and metal shavings and stuff. So in order to, to, to find one type of micrometeorite, and there's different types, most of them are that we find are made out of nickel and iron. That's what the Earth, planet Earth is, a big ball of nickel and iron. Matter of fact, right now you're standing on a big ball of, there it is, that's the Earth. It's, it's mostly nickel and iron. Down inside, it's melted. It's so hot down in there. That was made by particles gathering together and making our planet. And there's still some spatter going on, micrometeorites. So here's an easy way to do it. Here's your bucket. My bucket. So you need to equip yourself. And I, try, I, I like to use a plastic, and it could be anything. And it doesn't have to be a official bucket or anything. And a magnet. You just put the magnet in the bucket. Doesn't matter where you put it in there. And then you can go out and put this under the downspout of your house and wait for it to rain, let the rainwater wash through here. Or you get up there and hose your roof off, just stand on there and go shh. Or you can wash out the gutter. If there are any micrometeorites on your roof, you might be able to find one. And I think somebody told me there, there might be one in every, it was it 10 square meters or something like that? So you look at your roof and you go, you know, every 10 square meters, maybe I've got 50 micrometeorites on that roof at any given time. They're not gonna be a, a suitcase full of them. You know, most of what's gonna come off the roof is not a micrometeorite. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's gonna be uh, leprechaun boogers, you know, it could be bird stuff, it could be anything up unicorn there. Unicorn spit. Yeah, unicorn spit, all kinds of things up there. But if you're patient, you'll find a micrometeorite, I bet you.
How, how do you tell the difference between a unicorn spit and a micrometeor? That's the question. The magnet will thin it out a little bit because the things that are magnetic, the nickel iron micrometeorites will stick to this. Let's look at some pictures of some other micrometeorites. Let's look up some. We got some other pictures. Oh, well, look at that one. Can you see the crystals traveling through the air? It's kind of shaped the outside. Oh, yeah. Kind of worn it away. looks like yeah. there's like little sticks of metal. Yeah, that one looks like uh, it was boiling at one time. It was so hot that it oh, was... Oh, it was liquid and then yeah. it solidified again. Yeah, it looks like it's fudge. I wonder why it's got all those lines like that. I wonder why some of them are rough and some of them are smooth. See, that's pretty rough. Yeah, I wonder if it like got hit by like a space shuttle or something. The space yeah. shuttle? Yeah, a space Oops. shuttle impact might be it. But I want you to consider this. This is the Earth, right? Yep, right that's here. the Earth. So it spins towards the east, I guess, a thousand miles an hour. That's pretty fast, right? A micrometeorite, if it comes in this way, it hits air that's going a thousand miles an hour towards it and it's coming in. So it'll get more heat this way because it hits the air. It's like riding a bicycle. The wind's blowing in your face, it's gonna slow you down. Yeah. If, if he goes this way and the wind's with you, it's not gonna get as hot. They can speed it up. And then yeah, mm. yeah, it, you can tell, you have to figure that out. Maybe if it comes straight in, goes like that, it's not gonna heat up as much as the one that runs into that moving air. They can be bigger because they haven't been burnt away. Nope. Or they might be rougher. They haven't been melted as much. I've been looking for these for a long time and I found a handful of candidates that might be a micrometeorite. And the way I can actually tell if it's a nickel iron is I can get a pair of pliers, put one of those in there, and I can crack it in half. And if it's shiny inside, you'll see the nickel and iron that it's made out of. Now that's the closest one. I think it might be, but see how rough it is? Yeah, that, that one came in on top. That, that one came in with the air uh, blowing with it maybe. But all you really need to do to collect that stuff is to get a, a bucket and a magnet. Mm -hmm. And if you get your hands on a pair of pliers, that's great. You can try cracking one open and see if it's shiny inside. Then you can sprinkle them on your pizza. Tasty. They do, yeah. Those micrometeorites are a good source Starry of iron. Pizza. They're a good source of iron. Thank you, Beckett. Wizard handshake. We got you. Thank you so much. And if you, hey, check us out on, uh, what is it? Midnight Science Club? Is that yeah, what we're doing? Midnight, Midnight Science Club. Yeah, check us out on Midnight Science Club. Scores and hundreds and reams of these activities to do. And this uh, collecting micrometeorites or trying to collect micrometeorites. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.